Moreland's Radio it is ten past six, and next Friday, a promotional company specialising in theme music genre events will be celebrating its second birthday. It's at the Central Club in the centre of Leek with a Matrix Club mix. And joining me in the studio now are Nick Sheldon and DJ Chrissy B. Okay, tell me first of all, what what is it? How did Anthemia? Is it Anthemia? How did it all get started? Basically, um, Nick kind of conned me into it. Uh, uh, yeah, is well, the honest bad, truth? Was it? <laughs> well, um, I I'd, I'd retired professionally from DJing five years ago, um, just because I'd I'd lost all faith in the old industry, really, um, struggling to make a living from it. So I found other paths, shall I say. Um, and one day I called up, because I work away a lot, I called Nick and Deb to say I'm coming up to see them, and Nick said, bring your diary. So I thought, great, he's probably going to pop the time. question and <laughs> and uh, marry Deb, make well, an honest lady of her. Um, so I opened my diary. She's and probably listening to you now. Yeah, you know. she probably oh, no. is. Um, and all those zumba moves she does, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be the wrong side of it. <laughs> and basically Nick throws this date at me I open my diary I've got a clean space there he says right put it in I've got a venue he's been trying to talk me into doing a night for two years and uh, I couldn't really wriggle out of that one how did you feel at that time uh, because you know so many DJs if I, if I had a if I had a fiver for every DJ who turned around and said that's it I'm retiring I'm not doing any more mm-hmm. My headphones are being hung up, and then suddenly they come out again. How did you feel? Well, excited or, or why were you Far from excited, it? I can assure you. Like I say, I'd, I'd given it up five years previous because I'd totally lost all faith in the industry. It, it just where, it wasn't where I initially started out, you know. Um, and I made a fantastic living from it, I've got to say. But, you know, it's just not the industry I, I actually originally fell in love with. So, um I didn't really yeah I didn't really want to do the gig um it came a bit closer to and I thought well if we're doing it let's do it right and we got some equipment together and I polished off some old equipment I had and you know what (laughs) it was a proper Del Boy moment wasn't it it was it was (laughs) really um and I didn't think it was going to be as well received as it was and I stood there half an hour after the doors opened with a full dance floor and I thought you know what this is what I left behind this is why I started DJing the rest is history really I suppose we've just gone from strength to strength tried different genres the 80s really proves very popular Um, and you know it's purely for the love of the music now Mm. Uh, we do it for fun Uh, we've all got our own separate careers so Anthemia is purely for fun when we stop enjoying it we'll stop doing it so what, why was that first phone call then, Nick? Why, why did the first time you, you turned around and said, get your diary out, I've got a date for you? Well, <clears throat> like Chris, I'd, um, I mean, I've had a very varied uh, DJing career myself um, all over the world, so... Um, and I'd sort of knocked it on the head because I'd lost faith in the music. Uh, I don't like the R&B kind of stuff or anything. I've always been a dance DJ. Um, and what it was, there was just nowhere, really, for people our age to go out um there's a lot of i don't know <coughs> young ones sort of seem to have a bit of trouble going on these days in clubs and stuff and we thought let's get something for our age group and and do it invite only so it is basically a private party mm-hmm. um and we got people i hadn't seen for 14 15 years on the first gig it was absolutely it quite was surreal crazy. wasn't it really? because <laughs> i i <laughs> I had an eight-year residency at uh, a wine bar, as most people probably know as Bubbles. Uh, it's now Elmo's, and I made some fantastic friends, and that's where I initially met Deb uh, as a friend, and I've been de- friends with Deb for now nearly 25 mm-hmm. years. Yeah. Um, and I had seen people that at that gig where... Sorry? <laughs> Is she that old? No, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stay, remain friends. Uh, <laughs> and basically, I've seen people I hadn't seen for 15 years since I, I finished that actual residency. Yeah. So it was fabulous. People coming up and hugging me all night. And I had a fantastic night. Yeah. It was great. And from that point on, I, I just wanted to continue with it. 
It didn't go without a hitch, though. I was going to say. I mean, we're two years on now, but it was. It was. There were a few difficulties at the start, weren't there? Well, well, the first night, the one of the speakers went, didn't it? Oh yes, straight away. Speaker up, yeah. um, I think you were at the bar at the time. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I couldn't get through the crowd to actually sort it out. (laughs) So Um, I carried on when he he sorted that out, Um, and then uh, we've we've moved venues since. Um, We were set up for the Foxlow. Yes, and then. A week before we were supposed to go in there, we'd just done a, um, an interview with the Lake Post as well. Mm-hmm. They rang up saying, well, we haven't got a licence. Um, obviously, there's more to that than meets the eye anyway, yeah, <laughs> seeing yeah, as they've, yeah. they've gone. <laughs> um, and then Mick and Kath came to the rescue at the Central Club. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, can't do enough for yeah, us, can they? They've supported us ever since. And, Let us you know, stick. It's not the most ideal venue because the amount of equipment we have <laughs> it really is a four hour job just get the equipment in there before we've even started wiring it up but they can't do enough for yeah. us N- there's never any obstacles in the way it's just this is what we'd like to do have you got any complaints no get on with it boys yeah. and here's a cup of coffee and a cake nice yeah one. oh that's a good one <laughs> tell me about the matrix club mix oh well they've been going now for uh, i think about 12 years um, I know Dean the drummer from back in the raving days um, and they're from all over the place there's Charmaine the singer there's a, a guitarist from Altrincham uh, there's Simon who does the keyboards um, and basically they do the 90s classics mm-hmm. um, which everyone knows You've got your Robin S um, Show Me Love um, Baby D Let Me Feel Your Fantasy uh, Candy Staten but they, <clears throat> they're not like any other live group they actually play for a whole hour non-stop and it's all live it's all like mixed in there's no records or anything absolutely brilliant and every time they've done a gig they take the roof off mm-hmm. everyone is really really impressed with me really excited about having them on actually we're very lucky to get <coughs> them actually you know because they've got a very full diary um and it just all fell into place for us as, for a second birthday so yeah we're more than happy to have them on board we've Did had like a test run sorry go, no go on <laughs> um <laughs> On my 40th, uh, well, Dean asked me to DJ for him on his 40th. Um, when it came closer, he said he hadn't got a venue or a time or anything. When it came closer to, it was basically around the time of my 40th. So I says, well, why don't you guys play for me and I'll DJ for you? So we did the old Brown Jug in Newcastle. Mm-hmm. And it was absolutely rammed. There were about 200 extra people trying to get in. Uh, great atmosphere. The music just complements each other. Um, and it is going to be an absolute fantastic night. <laughs> Take me through, before we talk about the night itself and how it's going to work and how people can get involved, take me through the last two years. What have been some of the highlights? It's got to be the boat trip, hasn't it? It's got to be, yeah. We we actually hired the Royal Daffodil on the Mersey for his first birthday party and we're quite apprehensive initially because we didn't know if we were going to be able to sell enough tickets to cover the costs and in all fairness, we just about covered costs. We didn't make a penny from that. I think it actually cost us. <laughs> it did, yeah. It was a, it's a big outlay before we even started. Yeah. yeah, and to be honest with you, it really didn't matter because that's what we started this for, for a night like that. The the weather was so kind to us. It was blue skies all day. Mm. The, the sun going down over the live in, live building that evening just basically put the top hat on it for us mill Fan- pond fantastic yeah the, 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 the mersey was like a mill pond we had a phenomenal night um and people still talk about that to this we, day we made such an impression at the actual um the girl uh, claire patros who we hired the the daffodil from they come down now from liverpool to all the events brilliant and we even have some people from manchester who, that was their first event they came to. Now, bearing in mind that this was like forty pound a ticket. Mm-hmm. Um, she actually, the, one of the girls she works down here is a um, acupuncturist on um, Deansgate, mm-hmm. and she saw it in the Leap Post. She contacted me. Says, "Yeah, we're going to take a gamble out because there's about eight of us coming." And ever since they've come down to all the gigs as well, they've had a fantastic night. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. So really twelve months off. on, how are you going to better that? I, you, you've got, <laughs> to be honest, I don't think we we, we can. Oh, you've got at this to. Stage. You've got to. I'm sure we'll, we'll pull something out of the bag. We're, We're very fortunate in, in a sense that we kind of found his own demographic. We found his own audience. These are people who, who are coming to our gigs generally are people who are usually sat at home on a Friday night. You know that's why we don't do so many gigs throughout the year. We'd never ever take this once a week, once a fortnight. A, we haven't got the time, and B, 
we don't want to water down the brand basically mm -hmm. so we're very fortunate we've we've not taken any any uh, punters from anybody else any other night we kind of found his own audience really yeah. mm. which is you know is great in this economic climate as it stands and also it's a fun absolutely fantastic clientele we've got coming in i mean we don't even have doorman on we've got we've no never had any trouble whatsoever no. yeah everyone just gets um, really drunk has a good dance and then and everybody looks after home. each other <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. tell me th take me through the night then what's going to be happening on the night is at the central club it's next friday so what's happening when do we start well um with doors open at nine o'clock aren't they yeah where everyone meets in the engine room at around eight o'clock now if they, d they take their ticket to the engine room and the engine room um supply everyone with a free shot so th th they're That's really they're kind of they're really yeah. happy with us yeah. because um Fridays is always quite dead. Sat um, Saturdays is more the busier night, yeah. I think. And, we, and we, f we fill the place yeah. for them, don't we? We yeah. usually we do put really all well. the people in there first hour of the night, so yes. they're more than happy to work with us. Um, that's 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 a good thing with the engine room. Um, so we're looking at opening the doors around about nine o'clock. People usually mm. filter through about nine thirty, and we're hoping to try and start with the first set from the Matrix band um, about 9.30? About 9.30 till 10.30 and then we'll be doing uh, an hour's DJing and then they're going to go or an hour and a half DJing and then they're going to do another hour, full hour set for us as well which is above and beyond yes. yeah. uh, doing two hours of Matrix, really mm -hmm. can't wait for that and then we finish, we've got to got a later licence for two o'clock this time as well um, we've got um, Another local lad, Ant Spark, is getting up as often and yeah, um, yeah. doing a bit of DJing at the beginning for us because um, people always wanted yeah. to DJ at our place. So one yeah. of the things that my listener will have noticed—I mean, you two bounce off each other so well, and you just carry on going. Do you actually DJ together? Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah, absolutely. We we funnily enough, you say that we do actually bounce off each other musically as well. You know. Um, pulling things out of his record boxes occasionally and like right and it is all vinyl as well <laughs> is it well, yeah not necessarily wow. uh, oh right okay oh, so so, yeah. so the mp3 player is going to come out and the computer, uh, are, you, are you one of these computer djs now i'm not no, no I, I i kind of retired <laughs> before that age came through as so such. we've got a few cds in there oh i, I i'm purely cd nowadays um the odd sacrilege. bit of vinyl nick thinks it's sacrilege and but <laughs> Slowly but surely, Nick Devil's is plates. coming over to my way of thinking. <laughs> so how does that actually work then? Because so you've got, have you got two lots of kit on the we, stage? Well, basically, it's like a, the, it's it, mint, it? yeah, it's like a flight deck of a Boeing seven four seven. Actually, we've got it. Um, we, I did it one night when when you weren't there to help, weren't it? Where I had a wires and of sorry, not wires, chains. I've hung chains all the way down from the beams. So it's suspended from the ceiling. So, so we get no feedback, yeah. and we've got uh, decks. Uh, sorry, turntables, CDJs, mixer, um, yeah. and computer. Got a computer, a computer for the graphics. A, yeah, for controlling a projector as well. We've got. Yeah. And a computer, what we usually record the and yeah. the night plus with a uh, an MP3 library on there as, if there's anything we particularly need. So, yeah, it's pretty high tech to be honest with you. <laughs> backstage. <laughs> and yeah. the lighting there as well, the lighting rig to go it's, along with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we've got a, six lasers now. Yeah, because that must have changed. You said you said you finished, you'd, you'd <clears> stopped <throat> doing it. I mean, lasers have really taken over in discos. Absolutely. Well, he, he turned up with his traffic lights, didn't he? You know yeah, but I mean? they're still good. Like, <laughs> No, Chris, still leave there. it. We don't need it. I use them at and Christmas in the lights. conservatory now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, we are, we we basically the first year we invested every every single penny we ever made in in equipment. Um, we've and then some. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. And we've upgraded the sound system. Um, it, the only drawback now is space where to keep it. We we. I yeah. mean, we've got about eighteen. Because now, yeah, we've got we've got a ten k rig now, which is pure quality. It's not purely for volume. It's 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 for the it's quality absolutely. and the sound. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, and I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to sound. Well, I was going to say that because this is my next question. I mean, there's the two of you, mm -hmm. and and invariably it's no, I want more top, I want more bass. Mm -hmm. Which way round? Well, he's does it a sound go? engineer, so oh, right. So yeah. he, he just he just rules the rig. Uh, basically, yeah, yeah, when it comes to the sound system. But then again, I I could never market a gig, so this but is where Nick comes into his own. We mean we never actually push the levels do we no we've never redlined <laughs> that desk yet have we no we also the other thing obviously we haven't mentioned yet we've got um 
a full full drapes banners uh, printed up down Super room, Sport. Yeah. We do a fantastic job of them, and the, the place you wouldn't recognise it's a central club. Mm-hmm. We have everything covering all the curtains. We have stuff on the ceilings. Wow! It's uh, and also uh, Mick and Calf have just um, decorated as well. <laughs> ready which is that's going to be a shock they're 100% you. behind us you know <laughs> just down to the little things like cake and coffee when we're <laughs> setting up and yeah. stripping down it makes all the difference it's this so nice this is the nice. gear stripping down if anybody's worried at home you uh, know yeah. my mother no, might be listening she's I'm like, sorry oh, no, going on. <laughs> no I can assure you I won't be stripping nowhere no <laughs> alright then <laughs> so like to keep the you've said it's invitation only you've said people can go in with the ticket and they can go to the engine room first more importantly is it sold out yet? We've got about Virtually, 25 yeah. tickets left, haven't we? 25, yeah. So how do people get in touch? Um, Facebook page, we've got our own dedicated website. Um, got a blog. Got phone phone numbers, numbers are on there. Email us, inbox us on Facebook. Contact us via Facebook, any one of us. Yeah, we've got the website at um, um, anthemia.co.uk. Yep. Uh, we've got um, phone numbers of 07912. Six four five eight six seven. That's me. We've got Deb on zero seven eight one six one five two five four six. What's and your number? Mine is <laughs> zero triple seven zero eight one five nine one six. And we'll put those numbers on our website as well, guys. Thanks ever so much for coming in. Will you come in after next week and tell us how it's gone? More than welcome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because that would be good. Yeah, I, no I want to know that you've bettered that first birthday. Well, and there's loads you. of um, videos on the website as well from the nights we've done. And the and the good. website is all the wibblies, anthemia.co.uk. That's the one. Nice one. Thank you very much. Yeah.